Welcome to solving polynomial equations. Uh, today we're going to look at solving polynomial equations. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at solving these uh, polynomials uh, factoring. Okay, and there's a bunch of different techniques that we're going to be able to to use within that factoring. And there's just patterns that we really have to look out for. So let's address some of those different types of factoring techniques. But the important thing is we're going to use factoring to solve these quadra, uh, these um, polynomial equations. You can do it by graphing, um, but we're going to focus on algebraic means today. So some of the factoring techniques are um, the greatest common factor, meaning you can factor out one term from all of the terms. Okay, so that's one type of factoring method. We also have our normal quadratic trinomials. In the last unit we talked about when that a value is 1, when that a value is other than one uh, and how to factor those. Uh, we also learned how to uh, factor perfect square trinomials. And remember, here's those two patterns that you look at the first and last term of perfect squares and they add to be two times AB and then you can write it as the quantity A plus B squared. If you have that minus here, it's a, the quantity A minus B squared. So those are three uh, patterns or techniques we can use. Look for the greatest common factor first. Is it a quadratic trinomial? Is it a perfect square? So let's look at a few more patterns. So some of the other techniques of factoring include the difference of two squares pattern. Remember when you have two perfect squares and you're subtracting them, we can write it as the quantity of a plus b times the quantity a minus b. You can also factor by grouping. Now this is really important. When we did quadratic equations with an a value other than one, we did factoring by grouping. But this would work if you had four terms, especially if you have four terms and one maybe a cubic or a quartic. Um, but the idea here is if you have four terms, ax, ay, bx, by, notice how the first two terms have a in common. We factor it out. The two, uh, second and or third and fourth term have b in common. We factor that out. Now we have one term, two terms, and notice how they have the same pattern here. They're same number, x plus y, so you factor that out and we have a plus b. So that's factor by grouping. We also have the sum or difference, and that's of two cubes. So there are patterns for the sum of two cubes and the difference of two cubes. And the sum of two cubes is the quantity a plus b times the quantity a squared minus ab plus b squared. And if you have the difference of two cubes, you have the quantity a minus b times the quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared. So these are some techniques that we can use to factor. So the goal here of this concept is to be able to factor um, and solve polynomials. And when we do that, we're looking for the x-intercepts of the roots. That's the whole goal. Okay, We did it for quadratics, but now we can extend these concepts to polynomials. So let's look at some examples. All right, so our first example is going to ask us to solve each equation by factoring. So our first example is 2x cubed minus 5x squared equals 3x. So whenever we solve a, a polynomial, polynomial equation, we want to set the y value equal to 0. One side has to equal 0 because if we're looking for the roots, the intercepts, or you know, when we're solving these polynomials, you want the y value to be 0. So the first step we set one side equals 0, and so that means I subtracted the 3x from both sides. So here's where I'm starting. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x. So there's only three terms here. So factoring by grouping doesn't seem like it would work. Um, quadratic trinomials, perfect square trinomials are not going to work because this is a cube. So let's look at the greatest common factor. Is there something common to all three terms? And there is. There's x. They have an x in common, so I factor out the x. And basically, I divide each of these terms by x to get what's in parentheses. So I'm left with 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, all equal to 0. Our zero product property says, well, that if you have two numbers that multiply to be 0, one of them has to be 0. OK, but we're not done. We've got to look to factor in parentheses, if we can. Uh, if we can't factor in parentheses and we're solving, we'd have to use like the quadratic formula or completing the square. Uh, but let's look inside here, this 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, and try to factor. Now, this is a quadratic, so our a value is other than 1, so we're going to use the factoring by grouping. 
So two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 and add to be minus 5 are minus 6x plus x. So I rewrote minus 5x as negative 6x plus x. And notice how I can factor by grouping here. The first two terms and the last two terms. So in the first two terms I have a common 2x. I factor out a 2x of both of those and I'm left with x minus 3. This x minus 3 just comes along for the ride. Notice now we have two terms, 1, 2, okay, and they both have x minus 3, so you factor out the x minus 3, and whatever's on the outside is what's the other factor, so 2x, and this whole thing would be plus 1 because you factor out the x minus 3. So now we have x times the quantity 2x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 3 equals 0, so we set each of these equal to 0. Well, this one is just 0. You make that 0 would be negative 1 half and this would be 3. So those are our three zeros, okay, that we've solved the polynomial equation. Later on we'll learn about uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra and, and the relation that power has to the number of zeros that we will have. Okay, so that's example A. Let's go to the second example and see how we factor. Now, uh, in example B, we have 3x to the fourth plus 12x squared equals 6x cubed. Again, get everything to one side, and I'm going to bring over the minus 6x cubed by subtracting. Okay, I have three terms here. It's a quartic. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to factor out something that's common. Notice 3, 6, 12. 3 goes into all of those terms. So I actually factor out a 3x squared. The smallest amount of x as we have is x squared. So when I do that, I'm left with the, the trinomial here, quadratic trinomial, x squared minus 2x plus 4. Okay, so I'm still solving this polynomial equation. Uh, so the zero product property here says that if, if this product is zero, one of them has to be zero. So 3x squared equals zero, or this quadratic is equal to zero. Now, this one's pretty easy to solve for x. You just divide by 3 to both sides, you have zero square root of 0 is just 0, so that's 1. Now, I look here and I try to factor and I can't. There are no two numbers that multiply to be 4 and add to be negative 2. So now I have to use the quadratic formula, uh, in this case, to, to simplify. a is 1, b is minus 2, and c is 4. So by substitution, the opposite of negative 2 is 2, plus or minus, okay, the square root of uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c. So this first step is all substitution, and this is all divided by 2 times a, and our a value is 1. So this is all substitution into the quadratic formula. Now it's a matter of simplification. So we have 2 plus or minus 4 minus 16. Okay, 2 plus or minus root of negative 12 all over 2. So we're going to have imaginary solutions. Um, and we're going to rewrite this as 2 plus or minus 2i root 3 over 2, right? Because we can rewrite negative 12 as 12 times i squared, all under the square root. So the i, two, the i comes out, and 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3, so the 2 comes out as well, 3 stays. Now these three terms here all are common to 2, so we can just factor out our 2. Um, and we get 1 plus or minus i root 3. So our three zeros are 0, 1 plus i root 3, and 1 minus i root 3. Okay? And um, we're going to go from there. Um, so that's how we factor uh, polynomial equations. We're going to keep going. And notice how there's only three zeros here, but this is a squared, so it would be actually plus or minus 0. So this is a, probably a repeated 0 because this power is 4. Okay, there should be four zeros, and we'll talk about that later, but we've got our three zeros here. This one is going to be a repeat because of that squared. All right, so let's keep looking at some examples. This is a great example here because it is four terms, but it's not a quadratic, so we're going to solve x cubed plus 8x squared minus 4x minus 32. So I have four terms. So do I think, can I use a quadratic? No, because this is cubic. Uh, difference of two squares, sum of two cubes. No, because there's, there's more than two terms. Uh, it's not a difference and they're not perfect, they're not perfect cubes. So you gotta be real careful on which patterns you decide to try to use. Now, 
I'm going to just try grouping because I, I see that there's common terms here and there's common terms here. And let's see what we get by factoring by grouping. So I group my terms together, and I notice in the first two terms I get x squared is common. So I'm left with that x plus 8. Here, both terms are subtracted, so I'm going to factor out that subtraction of 4, and I'm actually left with x plus 8. Minus 4 goes into minus 4x, x times. Minus 4 goes into minus 32, 8 times. So I have one whole term, two terms, and notice how those two terms share, x plus 8. So I factor out the x plus 8, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. And this is all equal to 0. So you might think, oh, okay, I'm done, I factored. But again, you always have to make sure that when you look in parentheses, you are factored completely. I notice here, x squared minus 4, that's the difference of two squares pattern. So I'm actually going to factor out x squared minus 4 into x plus 2, x minus 2. And this is all equal to 0. Notice I have a power of 3, and now I have 1, 2, 3 factors. That's not a coincidence. Okay? So if all three of these numbers product is 0, one of them has to be 0. So negative 8 would make this first factor 0. Negative 2 would make this second factor 0. And positive 2 would make this third factor 0. So these are my solutions. These are actually the, the zeros. These are the x-intercepts. Uh, so again, you, you just have to be very careful on what you pick. Um, if there's four terms generally, maybe try factor by grouping if it's possible. I'm not saying it's always going to work. Uh, and then remember, when you get down into parentheses here and you start factoring things out, make sure whatever's in parentheses is always completely factored. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to show you two different patterns, uh, some smaller patterns. Um, if you notice here, you have x cubed minus 125. We're not solving these, we're just going to factor, okay? Um, how do I know I'm not solving? I didn't set either of them equal to zero. Uh, that's, that's the first thing I would notice. So I look here and I say, wait a minute, there's only two terms. Could this be different to two squares? No, because this is cubed. But if we notice, 125 is 5 cubed. So I have difference of two cubes. I can use that pattern, and here's the pattern. In this case, A is going to be x, B is going to be 5, so we substitute. So we have the one factor is x minus 5, and then we have x squared plus x times 5 plus 5 squared, and then we simplify from here. Okay? So x minus 5 times x squared plus 5x plus 25. I don't have to go any further because I'm only factoring, and I cannot factor this quadratic. No two numbers multiply to be 25 and add to be 5, so I'm done. I don't have to worry about this. Even though it says factoring, you would look here and say this is, uh, you know, x is to the first power, it's in simplest form. And then I would look to here to see if I can simplify. Again, I can't. This is not factorable. This is a really good example here, this last example, where we have x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 40. So there's only three terms here, so factor by grouping is not going to work. I don't see a quadratic, I don't see a difference. So you might think, well, how do I factor this? It all starts with this x to the fourth. Let's rewrite it as x squared raised to the second power minus 3x squared minus 40. And I've highlighted this x squared. Okay, both terms, the first two terms have it. So let's just change the name. Let's just call x squared being equal to a. So now we have a squared minus 3a minus 40, which is a quadratic equation. I can factor that. Two numbers that multiply to be 40 and add to be negative 3 are negative 8 and positive 5. So I write my values here. Those are my, those are my uh, factors. I'm not done, though, because a is not really the variable. a is actually equal to x squared. So I resubstitute x squared back in. So I get x squared minus 8. And x, uh, this should be x squared plus 5 here, not minus 8. So this would be x squared plus 5. I made a little mistake there. Uh, so that's just a quick trick to factor when you have only three terms in a fourth degree. And this, this particular example works when you have that x to the fourth and this second term is squared. Okay, so that's factoring polynomials. If you guys have any questions, you can uh, make the comments below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. I hope this helps, and we'll see you next time.